start of COVID, the majority of automakers had committed in some way or another to going electric at some point in the future, either by becoming a 100% electric automaker or by increasing the number of plug-in vehicles on their fleet. And while there were some fossil fuel addicts who remained aghast at the proposition, plenty of people were ready for EVs. During the first few months of COVID-19, people saw firsthand what the impact of reducing the number of miles driven by internal combustion engine vehicles would have on the planet. Air quality improved, people found that the din of traffic lessened, and people who began working from home noted they didn't need to travel as far as frequently as they actually thought they needed to. Fast forward four years and we've seen a steady, increasing EV backlash. As we've noted in other videos recently, electric vehicle FUD, that's fear, uncertainty and doubt, is most definitely on the rise. People are reluctant to make big purchases at a time when they're not 100% sure what their future holds. And companies that were once portraying their push towards electric as something that was a done deal are now backtracking, either cancelling new EV plans, postponing them, or at least scaling them back. And given all of this and more, we're hearing from people who want to know one simple question. Should I wait to buy an EV or get one now? Depending on where you are in the world, you're either in the midst of a pretty massive financial downturn, a recession, or you're maybe just maybe recovering from the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Or you're living in a country where there's substantial economic growth and governmental figures and news reports say that the economy is booming and the stock market is booming, but where finding enough money to comfortably pay the bills is still seemingly impossible. OK, yeah. I am talking about the US economy here. When your utility company puts the price of electricity up by 18% in a single year and campaigns to push it even higher next, or where the cost of groceries is still going up, albeit more slowly than it was a few years ago, despite economists' claims that everything is great for the average household, it still feels like things aren't going well at all. And let's be honest, buying a car is a massive financial commitment for the majority of people around the world. At least, it is if the car you're buying has a price tag of more than a few hundred dollars equivalent, or you're not one of the very, very rare individuals out there who is independently wealthy enough to pay for a car with cold, hard cash. Something that TV shows and movies like to pretend is a fairly common occurrence, but which honestly really isn't. This is doubly true in the EV marketplace where low and mid-price models are often missing completely from Mark's all-electric lineups. Triply true in the US where smaller, cheaper European and Chinese vehicles just simply aren't sold. And if you're in the market for a new vehicle, I'm guessing you've also been seeing the massive amount of fear, uncertainty and doubt being spread about EVs. And perhaps it's put you off making the switch. We've covered that topic a fair amount on this channel, so I'm not going to rehash it here. But if you're looking at buying your first electric car, you're likely worried about resale value of EVs further down the line. You're likely worried about the long term repair costs and lifespan of the vehicle. And perhaps you're worried about everyday ownership issues like where to charge, how to charge and what charging station reliability is really like. As a side, if you want a beginner's guide to EV charging, keep your peepers peeled next week for a new video that we've working on that will focus exactly those queries. Of course, when choosing to buy a new EV, the first thing you should be asking yourself is, do you actually need it? I know this is obvious, 
but it's all too easy to get caught up in the new shiny, shiny process of buying something, especially if you're enticed by a special purchase deal, a lower interest rate or governmental incentives. And I've been there. In fact, back in late 2020, my wife and I put a deposit down on a brand new Ford Mustang Mark E for her and initiated the ordering process because of the financial incentives available to just do that. Since it took a few months for the vehicle to actually be produced, we changed our mind by the time it was at the dealership and luckily our dealership was more than happy to sell it to someone else, so no harm, no foul. We should have, maybe, spent more time deciding if a new car was right for us before we put down the deposit. But knowing that there was substantial wait before it would actually be there and that a deposit was not a binding contract to buy, we were okay making the decision we did. In our case, we decided that a new electric car wasn't ultimately the best choice for us because financially we wanted to send the money we'd have been paying on a new car loan somewhere else. We decided our priorities lay elsewhere and because we already had a perfectly good electric car, we skipped on the replacement idea. And obviously, if you are making that purchase decision of, do I need a new car? There's going to be a bunch of different considerations you'll need to take into account. Can you afford the monthly payments? Will a new car be better than the current one you have? And what if things change circumstantially further down the line? After all, a big financial commitment like a car purchase or even entering a lease is something that's not always that easy to get out of if circumstances change. But another consideration I want to discuss is the question of, do you actually need a car at all? I know, I know, it might feel weird for a YouTube channel that's primarily focused on electric vehicles to ask if you actually need a car at all, but the answer for that for many people isn't what they think it is. Sure, if you live in large swathes of the US where there's minimal public transit or where you have a commute that can't easily be serviced by what transit there is, you might rightly scoff at the idea of not owning your own car. But given that the average commute of most people in the US is under 25 miles, it's unlikely that the majority of people watching this live somewhere where there is not good public transit. We need to use it more because at the end of the day, public transit is better than private car ownership, both as a way of tackling congestion and emissions and by proxy accident rates. Of course, I would also be negligent to note those of us who now work from home and don't use a car at all to commute also don't really need a car that much. I fit into that category and were I still living in a metropolitan area, we don't, we live way out in the country, I could certainly see an argument for us as a family having one or no car at all. But at the same time, if you work from home and you're in reach of a good, reliable, affordable public transportation option, maybe you could save yourself a lot of time and money by ditching your car completely. You'd save on maintenance costs, insurance, and of course, fuel or charging fees. At this point, I know some of you are probably getting frustrated with the premise of the video and how I'm not addressing the actual question I posed. But here's the thing, you could and should consider buying a non-automotive EV if you're someone who can live without a car. I am, of course, talking about electric bicycles, which are quickly becoming a great way to get into the world of EVs without spending huge sums of money. For the same amount of money as a few months of car payments, you can buy a brand new, exceptionally made electric bicycle from a well-known, known good bike brand. Some countries and municipalities even offer incentives for people buying qualifying e-bikes, and some companies even count e-bikes under their health and fitness reimbursement programs or their cycle to work programs. And as I've said before, if you're in the market for an EV, it is worth trying out e-bicycles as well, as you might surprise yourself. There are also some really great cargo e-bikes out there that you can buy that could make your weekly shop entirely possible without a car. 
And if you've got kids or dogs, you can buy some really great cargo bikes, trikes and quads that provide great transportation options as long as you live somewhere with a temperate climate and good cycle path networks. And if you occasionally need a car, many major cities have established car clubs you can join to allow you to borrow a car when you need to. And even today, some automotive dealerships now offer rental programs for ad hoc use by customers. But let's say that you're someone who absolutely cannot survive without your own wheels. And the question again comes to, should you wait to buy or buy now? And the answer really does depend on your situation, both in practical and financial terms. If you currently own an internal combustion engine vehicle and you genuinely don't use it all that much, i.e. you make the occasional longer distance trip and otherwise use public transit or a bicycle, you honestly may find it's just easier to keep the car you have. If you use your gasoline car for lots of short trips, however, yeah, you really should consider switching to an EV. But I'm also going to suggest that you look at the used car market for your first vehicle. Why is that? Well, not only do you get to try an EV for a lower overall cost, but there's also something to be said for experiencing used EV ownership as a way of figuring out exactly what you'd want in a brand new, more expensive vehicle. The overwhelming majority of people I know who started their EV journey in an older used EV ultimately drove it for a few months or a few years before then upgrading to a newer one. And the knowledge and skills they learned from owning an older, often lower mileage model helped them make informed choices about which car they should ultimately invest in. Not only that, but buying used helps you benefit more quickly from the lower running costs associated with going electric and in today's rapidly evolving EV landscape, waiting to hold off on the latest and greatest technology is very much worthwhile. Which brings me to the question that many people have. Should I buy now or wait for the new hotness? Should I wait for Nex instead of CCS Type 1? The answer really does depend on your own circumstances and, of course, your own budget. Of course, to the latter, you should always consult a financial advisor before making a major purchase like a new car and be sure, whatever you buy, that you have a clear understanding of the costs associated with and contract of the sale. But we're also hearing from plenty of people who state they're not going to buy an EV until X or Y happens. Usually those two things being until EVs can drive a particular distance or until I can use Tesla's supercharging network. If you're someone who fits into that first category, you're probably among the majority of people who believe you need to travel much further than you really need to, unless you live hundreds of miles away from a nearby town or make cross-country trips every single weekend, the chances are that you don't need more than about 150 miles, 240 kilometers of real-world range on even the worst of daily commutes. That said, if you live somewhere with super cold temperatures in the winter, you may want to expand that range upwards by about 50%, especially if the vehicle you're looking at has a resistive heating system instead of a heat pump but it's still well within the capabilities of the majority of used EVs on the market today. If you have access to off-street parking and charging, and admittedly not everyone does, you should find that even with that kind of mileage requirements, which is very much more than the average person actually needs, you should be just fine without needing to rely on public charging infrastructure. Our very own DP, M, now has a Chevrolet Bolt, and he has no charging options at home. They do use public charging during the week as required, but also tend to get a recharge when working at the studio. That gives them more than what they need for most daily driving duties, and they only really have to top up at the weekends. Now to the CCS versus NAX debate. And if you are outside of North America, I'm sorry, I'll keep it brief. The CCS Type 1 is Currently, the charging standard you'll find at most non-Tesla charging stations across North America, and for the most part, while some networks, like Electrify America, have got some really terrible reliability issues, if you live in a major metropolitan area, you're likely to be able to find working CCS Type 1 charging without too many headaches. 
in some parts of the US as well, Tesla already has installed SuperDock equipped superchargers, which make it possible for you to use non-Tesla vehicles with Tesla superchargers. And finally, later this year, adapters will roll out for non-Teslas to use. But I should also point out this switch is not going to happen overnight. And if you're waiting for a magic moment to buy an EV at some point in the future after the transition is magically completed, I'm afraid you're going to be waiting for a really long, long time. While NAX might be a good long term bet, making a transition from one standard to another is going to be painful. It's going to take a lot of time and the chances are CCS type one charging infrastructure will be around and used for some significant time to come. Additionally, this rollout is likely going to be phased based on which automakers signed up with Tesla first and which automakers have deals. In some cases, companies have promised to switch without finalizing deals with Tesla, and that could ultimately result in more headaches for customers. Buying a car today that fits your needs and wants, which has a CCS Type 1 connector, still makes sense, especially since most companies are promising an adapter in the future. This allows for maximum flexibility today without forcing you to wait. And in short, if you're waiting for a magic future moment for the perfect EV, you're going to be waiting for a long time. Making the switch sooner rather than later not only helps you save money, but it helps you prepare for whatever vehicle you're lusting after in the future. And while gasoline prices are currently much lower in some markets than they were not so long ago, it's inevitable that prices will ultimately go back up again. The used EV market is much better today than it once was in terms of affordability. And if you add into that plenty of used EVs entering from rental fleets, well, you've probably got more of a chance of nabbing a deal today than you have at any point in the past. So should you wait? Well, if you're worried about the financial impact, you could survive without a car at all, or you're not sure what lays ahead for you in terms of where you're going to be or what you're going to be doing. Yes, you should wait. But otherwise, it's probably one of the best times to go electric, at least if you live in countries where generous incentives are available for both new and used car purchases. And if you're in need of some help, why not reach out to us? We now offer an EV consultancy service that helps you, your business or your community group, learn more about EVs or buy an EV that is best for you. So click the links in the down below for more info. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling right by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel every month through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Carl B. Knapp, Stoyle Pankoff, Smithers, John Strott, Kelly, Joseph Valentinetti, John Flint, and Nate Fritz. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is also below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also in the down below. This month, we're campaigning for an end to charging deserts with an amazing new t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video, but we think that this one 
is also well worth a look. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!